Hi, hello. Welcome to my channel. I'm Thomasin PA2066. Today is 20th of June 2022. I would like to do a topic on M-Bot. M-Bot is a Malaysian board of uh, technologies and the uh, comparison of M-Bot's uh, primary legislation, uh, which is the Technologies and Technician Act 2015, uh, um, compares Act um, to our Valuable Appraiser, Estate Agent and Property Managers Act 1981. Let me uh, dive in. I Welcome to my channel. I'm Thomasin PA2066. Today is 20th of June 2022. VAEP uh, Act 1981 versus T&T &T Act 2015. Huh? It's the topic of uh, my discussion this afternoon. So VAEP stands for Valuable Appraiser, Estate Agents and Property Manager. And then T&T &T stands for Technologies and Technician. Uh, these two are about uh, regulate think a body of uh, people are uh, professional they call themselves professionals uh. Uh, so these uh, two acts are quite similar in the aspect that the are uh, in the law uh, to regulate the practice of certain profession so on the left hand side uh, BAEP uh, actually four professions and T and T are two technical um, professions uh. let me uh, bring you this topic of discussion so the way I want to approach this uh, two comparison uh, on the act how it is uh, compared uh, is I want to highlight that uh, it is new versus all now uh, new means 2015 versus all means 1981 now uh, objective we want to study the components uh, of the legislation so major title various parts uh, of the act key provisions what are the differences between the laws uh, how are these uh, reflected uh, in the various components uh, of the act and also the subsidiary legislation uh, which is the regulations uh. and in the sense that the act major uh, has these uh, schedules similarly the regulations subsidiary legislation uh, has their schedules also so anyway m board uh, or we say that Malaysian Board of Technologies uh, -Bot, is a professional body under the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. Uh, uh. The short form uh, for uh, Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation usually is uh, M-O-S-T-I, uh, MOSTI. And the act, uh, the Professional Recognition to Technologies and Technicians uh, in Technology and Technical Fields recognized by the board uh. so what are these uh, different uh, from general uh, types of professional bodies uh, like accountants uh, and like Malaysian Medical so which is the MMA uh, uh, the Malaysian Medical Act the Accountant Act what, what is this uh, law different uh, uh, the act that regulates the profession uh, from the actual uh, let's say professional uh, like say you are a uh, accountant and uh, now uh, when you see this bot uh, mbot uh, m -bot, how does it differ from your accountant's uh, act uh? so this mbot act uh, or so-called tnt act uh, looks at the technology based profession that cuts uh, across discipline uh. so it's not just your own discipline it cuts across discipline so for an accountant uh, maybe an accountant working in a technical field, maybe working in an oil and gas. So his uh, exposure of using his uh, current um, knowledge uh, of account, uh, accounting or accountancy, uh, but using it in a technical field of oil and gas. Uh. So he is not an engineer, he is an accountant, but involved in a field of uh, oil and gas. And that part, uh, he can uh, get a cross-discipline recognition uh, as in MBOT. And this is based uh, from the conceptual design uh, to the realized technology and cover from technician with the MQF level 3 to advanced level diploma uh, up to technologies which uh, has bachelor's degree and above. So as a whole, uh, this professional um, MBOT, uh, MBOT uh, 
qualified technologists and technicians are, are looking at integrated role uh, from a concept to reality. Lah. So the example just now, an accountant in the oil and gas, the involvement in the accounting software using software into oil and gas businesses, maybe that in that sense, uh, it becomes a um, technological change uh, in the profession which uh, accountants uh, get involved with uh, software uh, IT involved in the oil and gas industry. Uh. So that part is an integrated role uh, from just being the core purpose uh, carrying out the job as an accountant. So there are 24 technology and technical fields under MBOT, uh, which uh, is until January 2022. So which includes uh, electrical and electronic technology, information computing technology, chemical technology, telecommunication uh, until the part on health and medical technology. So here I would like to pinpoint some of these sciences uh, which are never in a way regulated as much as a profession. Uh, so maybe food technology. So food technology is one uh, aspect uh, where there is uh, various certification and various um, agency that uh, certify the safety of food but the food technologists themselves, uh, qualified food technologists themselves are not as much as regulated uh, like a lawyer or a doctor. Similarly, uh, for say uh, in the case of uh, Arts and design and creative uh, multimedia technology, uh, which is uh, artists, uh, like uh, even singer, creative singer, creative uh, content producer. Uh, these are areas where there is no single professional body that really say who or who should not or cannot uh, evolve in this type of profession. So this means there are a lot of blur area where there is no single profession recognized so far, uh, regulated by law. There is no independent law like um, the case of a medical law or a legal profession uh, act that protects these uh, professionals. But then with the embod uh, on this TNT, uh, the Technologies and Technical uh, Technician Act, then uh, this blur area of the profession uh, can be recognized as a uh, professional recognition. So I would put here as a side-by-side -side comparison uh, between the Act which is 1981 BAEP Act and the TNT Act which is 2015 the new Act. So this has uh, been enforced in 1981 for the valuer and appraiser and then included in the valuer appraiser uh, estate agents in 1985 and after that Included again the property managers in 19, uh, sorry, in 2017 year end, which is 2018. So this regulation, uh, the Act of Parliament, uh, uh, regulates the public uh, from the various dealings in the real estate and property management industry. Lah. So the purpose of a uh, law is to protect the interests of the public, uh, not to be cheated by anyone simply calling themselves uh, as uh, estate agent or property manager. Also, uh, it's a little bit like an example where people got conned uh, because uh, there are all kinds of illegal broker out there trying to sell expensive uh, stuff uh, and uh, cheat the public. So the law uh, regulates this profession so that the public are protected. However, on the technologies and technician side, uh, there is still no such uh, regulated framework. Lah. Oh, so the reason probably is because it's still very new. It gazetted in 2015, 24 areas as of uh, now, uh, June 2022. Um, it involves the uh, area of technology from the product development phase, manufacturing to testing and commissioning uh, of the system of technology uh, until maintenance uh, if you are in the technology uh, field. Whereas if you are in the technical side, uh, then it becomes um, lesser, which is only testing, commissioning, and maintenance. Uh. So there is still no uh, framework on regulating who should be involved in this job or who are 
illegally involved in the job lah, huh? so because like car mechanics huh? they, they are self-learn mechanics they never went to proper training school but they are very good in skill so this type of uh, skill based job um, indeed um, well you do not uh, see the need lah, to govern or regulate this industry in order for the free choice of the public lah, to go into uh, any of these uh, professions lah, huh? so i have highlighted the difference between technical and the technology services is the part on development and uh, manufacturing so for the technologies uh, they are broader uh, in the sense of involving in research and development of product and uh, trying to produce the system and uh, of course after that doing the testing market testing commissioning the system and also to maintain it so advantages uh, now m board uh, is new so recognition and acceptance uh, if you are a professional qualified um, professional technologist then you can carry the title of TS or the PT uh, P tech uh, name uh, at the back similar to technician TC or the C tech at the end of the name and get recognition uh, from the peers uh, in the industry uh, of course the talent mobility more professionals are given the um, mobility of um, joining up with other associations and uh, go on a more um, higher level lah, together with the professional bodies it's also about lifelong learning meaning to say um, having to fulfill some requirement by the board and board lah, to have CPD hours and to always uh, keep updated uh, on the current trend in the profession that a person specializes in and usually we also look at um, M-Bot itself uh, playing the role is in the regular programs to enhance uh, the different technology fields uh, so they will be expanding instead uh, just 24 they may be expanding to more area where M-Bot can benefit uh, the people in the field, uh, the technicians uh, and the uh, one that uh, came from or came from practice on the ground well they emphasize the fact that professionalism is about well different from expert uh, as in it includes also the behavior ethical behavior and the conduct of the person uh. like most professional bodies uh, they would require they would require members of the profession to have a high standing uh, practice in an ethical manner having high conduct good uh, image of the society lah. this is the comparison between parts to parts lah, for the law the technology and uh, technologies and technician act there is a registration and recognition of that registration of a professional technologies and certified technologies lah, and in the providing of the technology services and technical services which i mentioned earlier lah, so technical services and technology services includes uh, um, the development of uh, product um, the manufacturing the testing the commissioning and also the maintenance of a system uh. Uh, so this uh, meaning to say if you are a IT person then you work on your IT product and this IT product came from your research and development and you have put it to um, manufacture it out and test it, tested it uh, in the marketplace as well as uh, eventual uh, maintenance uh, of this uh, product in the marketplace so this is uh, enacted just 2015 well the content uh, the parts uh, part one part two um, part three uh, about registration of the technologies and technician because this is an act to register uh, so it has a portion uh, talking about the board itself it is a main portion like I highlighted in the box part 3 which is about recognition of registration and of course you have registered the person you want to ensure that they perform the task of their job and their profession uh, correctly so there is a part which uh, talk about suspension disciplinary action cancellation deregistration so these are involved uh, in the part 4 in case a person has been uh, wrongly 
accused of doing something wrong, he has an uh, avenue to appeal. And the investigating committee uh, should be able to listen to hear his uh, grievances. Uh. So this is a uh, valuable appraisers, estate agents and property managers act, which is uh, 242. Uh. The other one is 768. Uh, so almost a few hundred acts uh, in between. Many years has passed. And here it says that registration of valuable appraisers, estate agents and property managers. Uh, uh, so it's the purpose of registering. And it is throughout Malaysia. So let us go into the parts. Here under the first and second, it was about um, how the board, board of value huh, and appraiser, estate agent and property manager is built out of. After that, then they talk about the register in part four. And uh, there are, of course, areas like part five, which is about value and appraiser. Part 5A is about estate agents. And part 5B is about property managers. Huh. So this is because earlier on there was only one part and then later on they expanded it to estate agent and property managers. Refer back to my earlier video on how to quickly learn uh, the act. So there was a video which I explained all these things. Uh, uh. Similarly, um, like the TNT Act uh, is uh, talk about uh, disciplinary action uh, against the um, wrongdoers. Uh. So cancellation, uh, suspension punishment uh, huh? and they give the avenue of appeal similar like in the TNT Act. Uh. Right. So we talk about how much uh, the Act uh, actually is. Uh. So VAEP because it, uh, it was 1981, the Act itself, uh, it has come up with the regulation which is the VAEP rules 1986. Uh. Uh, on the part of the TNT Act, uh, it also came with the regulation 2017, but it's only a fee regulation. So the part on uh, valuer, appraiser, estate agent and property managers uh, rules, uh, 1986, uh, it's really a lot of rules because it was uh, much earlier and more multiple uh, discipline type of uh, profession, valuer involving into different parts of uh, profession like value being a estate agent, value being a property manager. So the rules are much more. Whereas the 2017 fee regulation is only just the fee. So this fee regulation for TNT Act 2015 is more for how to put the various fees for application as a graduate technologist, how much you would pay for the registration fee as a professional technologist, how much you will need to pay uh, for the registration. Oh, so it's a fee, fee regulation only. And similarly, certified technician is uh, also, uh, what are the fees to pay? Qualified technician, what are the fees to, to pay? Whereas uh, for the value of appraiser estate agents uh, rules, uh, we call the VAEP rules 1986. It's a lot, a lot more. In fact, uh, clients account which involve uh, collection money, collection of money from clients. We talk about the various uh, conducts uh, or ethics of a registered estate agent, uh, conducts and ethics of the valuer. And then also we are waiting for the amended one, which is a uh, new regulation in the, on the table. It's a work in pro progress. Uh including conduct and ethics for property managers. Also, we have also advertisement and publicity, very detailed area, um, regulating the profession. Also, the disciplinary procedure in well spelled out uh, different sub-paragraphs. And therefore, the regulation, because of having, having different types of uh, steps and uh, procedures, uh, then there is the various schedule uh, that carries the various forms. So let us go through this uh, because this is quite an important area, also important for getting uh, used to different forms. First schedule is about the fees and allowances of the board, uh, member of the board when they have meeting. Second schedule talks about forms, various forms uh, for application for registration various uh, forms of uh, authority to practice as a firm, application for authority to practice. It also talk about the types of uh, 
uh, renewal forms uh, every year you need to renew for yourself as well as for the firm itself similarly um, for the practicing certificate lah, huh? annual um, practicing certificate or here we call authority to practice so this annual authority to practice ATP uh, authority to practice uh, we need to renew it every year where the board uh, come up with the ATP which is uh, form uh, G for valuation form H for appraiser form I for uh, estate agency and also the new form uh, which is for the uh, property manager right uh, so this is a second schedule quite a lot uh, in the second schedule uh, then you go to third schedule which talks about fees uh, for processing to apply for uh, this um, registration uh. so if you apply to become a valuer how much do you need to pay you apply to become a uh, estate agent how much to pay if you are setting up an estate agency firm how much to pay all these are in uh, schedule third schedule uh, so fees to pay fourth schedule is uh, regarding a uh, area of register also uh, part part four is actually about register uh, in the actual act so fourth schedule uh, is about also the register uh, so the register for valuer register for professionally valuer professionally estate agent register for the uh, various uh, firms uh, with, uh, registration of the firms so that is under fourth schedule fifth schedule can remember very well because we went through the fifth schedule for the forms to use uh, for examination uh. so fifth schedule is about examination last time when there was no bis uh, we, we were not using the computerized bis system online we have to write to the board for registration as a student as well as sitting for the exam uh, using the forms inside uh, schedule the fifth schedule uh. sixth schedule um, is about qualification recognize which uh, can get you registered as a probationary valuer probationary estate agent uh. so it's a whole lot now uh, you can see it in the board website uh all that uh, accreditation and registration um, of uh, institution uh, that uh, goes through uh, this accreditation to be able to deliver um, those uh, educational related things uh. also that is six, six schedule seven schedule will be very easy uh, to remember seven schedule is for fee you know, how much uh, valuers should charge how much uh, estate agents should charge how much uh, it is for property manager to charge uh, seven schedule scale of fee eight schedule is about clients account and also auditors report uh. so there is a standard auditors report that is required uh, inside the uh, this uh, eight schedule eight schedule really is about more of an auditor report than the client's account uh. nine schedule is about appraisers restriction which are no no more now very few appraisers around Ten schedule is about forms uh, for all these uh, notice of complaint related to complaining uh, notice of dismissal of charge order of removal of name from the register is about disciplinary action taken uh, on members uh, so that is on the 10th schedule 11 schedule is related to a notice of appeal uh, so if you need to appeal when you have uh, this uh, disciplinary action against you you need to appeal then you go to 11 schedule to look at the form 12 schedule is about fee and allowances uh, for the appeal board so when it comes to appeal then the board will have to sit to to study the matter and uh, this board are consisting of members uh, and the deposit for appeal is three thousand ringgit per appeal so you want to appeal for another hearing uh, you have to deposit 3,000 ringgit on another part of the act uh, itself uh, so there is a interesting area where in the act itself uh, for TNT uh, there is a stamp usage of official stamp so this is under section 20 uh, of the technologies and technician act 2015 uh, which authorizes the professional technologies and certified technician uh, the right to use the official stamp this is different from 
uh, value appraisal estate agent and property managers act uh, there is no such a uh, provision in the act that uh, says you have a stamp so this is an interesting area where mbot uh, the act itself uh, provide a stamp so what does this look like uh, official stamp of ts and tc so on the left hand side is actually for professional technologists from the right hand side is certified technician uh. so if you are a professional technologist you design your stamp according to this uh, uh, requirement and you can use this stamp to uh, stamp your document uh. so say you give a quotation for a job then you stamp it and you sign it uh, above it saying that you are uh, qualified uh, to to give this stamp so usually it is for endorsement uh, also endorse that uh, there is a certain credibility uh, to the work done so our conclusion on this uh, presentation is we compare the VAEP Act uh, 1981 to the T&T Act 2015 uh, uh, we want to see the new and the old so I went through the introduction to this Technologies and Technician Act 2015 what it is for we also went through the Value Appraiser Estate Agent and Property Managers Act to, uh, 1981 then uh, part on the TNT Act, there was a Malaysian Board of Technologies, uh, M Board. So, what uh, are the things inside? The key differences between the two acts, parts uh, versus parts, regulation versus regulation. We know that uh, the TNT Act is very new, so there's only one fee regulation. Whereas for the VAEP Act, uh, the subsidiary legislation, the regulation rules. 1986 uh, is a huge amount of information in there. Uh. Oh, we also uh, saw the disciplinary section part of the individual act. So both has got the appeal um, the section uh, whereby you are expecting the disciplinary action be taken. We also look at the schedules. Uh. Of course, uh, BAEP has a lot of schedule. The schedule on the act itself the VAEP Act and also the schedules on the rules 1986 so 1986 rules has got all in 12, uh, uh, 12 uh, schedules so we went through the 12 schedules in quite detail just now um, on the main part uh, schedule 7 is for fee and um, there are schedules like schedule 4 which is about um, register uh, schedule 4 is about the register we also talk about appeal and the appeal board is schedule 11 and 12 also we went through some of this uh, thing for a purpose that we familiarize ourselves uh, in case uh, is asked in the tpc thank you very much i'm thomasin pa2066 this is my mobile number i have a few websites uh, findway.info is a geolinking advertising website contract to you.com uh, Comparative index ranking of properties, my real property online a collection of uh, videos, and also some listing. EstateAgentExam.com, a online self-study platform for diploma in estate agency examination. Uh, Abacus Real Estate dot farm, a retail uh, website for listing of uh, advertisement. Thank you very much.